You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Struggling to secure on prem apps with modern identity? Don't worry, you're not alone. Join industry leaders from Fortune 500 organizations to secure your apps on any cloud with any IDP, regardless of your environment's complexity. Meet Strata's identity orchestration platform, Mavericks. Say goodbye to the headaches of app refactoring and legacy tech debt. With identity orchestration, you can modernize legacy apps to use MFA or passwordless authentication in a few weeks, migrate from one IDP to another, and so much more without changing the app. No matter your IAM use case, Strata extends the value of your current identity investments. And the best part? You can try it for free today. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire to share your biggest identity challenge, and they'll hook you up with a complimentary pair of AirPods Pro. Don't miss out. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire. That's strata.io slash cyberwire. Team Viewer tackles APT29 intrusion. Microsoft widens email breach alerts. Uncovering a malware epidemic. Google's distrust on Entrust. Safeguarding critical systems. FTC versus MGM. Don't forget to back up your data. Polyfill's accidental expose. Our guest is Caitlin Shim, director of AWS Cloud Governance, and she joins Rick Howard at the AWS Reinforce event. They're discussing cloud governance, the growth and development of AWS, and diversity. And a telecom titan becomes a telecom terror. Today is Friday, June 28th, 2024. This is not Dave Bittner, but Trey Hester filling in for Dave Bittner. And this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Remote access software provider TeamViewer is investigating a breach of its internal corporate IT environment, the record reports. The company said in an update this morning, quote, Current findings of the investigation point to an attack on Wednesday, June 26, tied to credentials of a standard employee account within our corporate IT environment. Based on continuous security monitoring, our teams identified suspicious behavior of this account and immediately put incident response measures into action. Together with our internal incident response support, we currently attribute this activity to a threat actor known as APT29, also known as Midnight Blizzard. Based on current findings of the investigation, the attack was contained within the corporate IT environment, and there is no evidence that the threat actor gained access to our product environment or customer data. End quote. The Health Information Sharing and Analysis Center issued a threat bulletin yesterday, alerting the health sector to active cyber threats exploiting TeamViewer. The record also notes that cybersecurity firm NCC Group notified its customers that it has been made aware of significant compromise of its team viewer remote access and support platform by an APT group. Microsoft is notifying additional customers whose email correspondence with Microsoft was accessed by the Russian threat actor Midnight Blizzard, according to Engadget. The number of those affected was not disclosed. Microsoft stated, quote, This week, we're continuing notifications to customers who corresponded with Microsoft corporate email accounts that were exfiltrated by the Midnight Blizzard threat actor, and we are providing the customers the email correspondence that was accessed by this actor. This has increased detail for customers who have already been notified and also includes new notifications. End quote. In a follow-up to a story we've followed over the past few months, Security Week reports that the Anne and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago is notifying 791,000 people that their personal and medical information was accessed during a January ransomware attack. The hospital said in a breach notification that it refused to pay the ransom, and the Riceta Ransomware Group subsequently marked the stolen data dump as sold on its website. Security Week says the breached information includes names, addresses, dates of birth, dates of service, driver's license numbers, social security numbers, email addresses, phone numbers, health claims information, medical condition or diagnosis, medical record number, medical treatment, and prescription information. 
Outpost 24 has published a report on a malware distribution campaign that's spreading hundreds of thousands of malware samples, infecting each victim with up to 10 of them at the same time. The campaign is run by a suspected criminal group based in Eastern Europe, which is likely providing the distribution operation as a service for numerous malware operators. The researchers believe the threat actor is paid per infection and is attempting to spread as much malware as possible to as many victims as possible. The malware is distributed via phishing emails and malware loaders. Once the file is executed on the machine, it unfurls by installing up to 10 strains of information-stealing malware. Google has announced that Chrome will no longer trust digital certificates issued by Intrust, a major certificate authority. The decision follows multiple compliance violations by Intrust, which have eroded confidence in its competence and reliability. The move will impact numerous organizations, including major banks and corporations, starting November 1, 2024. Google recommends affected entities transition to a new CA. Despite Intrust's recent efforts to address these issues, the response has been deemed insufficient. The company is urged to demonstrate significant improvements to regain trust. The U.S. Homeland Security Subcommittee on Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Protection held a hearing to address vulnerabilities in critical infrastructure and the role of cyber insurance in enhancing resilience. Key witnesses emphasized the importance of cyber insurance in recovery and risk mitigation, highlighting its potential to support both private and federal responses to cyber threats. The discussion underscored the necessity of proactive planning, clearer coverage standards, and enhanced public-private collaboration to protect critical infrastructure from evolving cyber threats. The Federal Trade Commission is pushing back against MGM Resorts International's efforts to block its investigation into a significant cyber attack that occurred last September. The breach compromised the personal information of 1.5 million guests and disrupted MGM's operations for over a week. MGM has been resisting the FTC's investigative demands, leading the FTC to seek a court order to enforce compliance. The FTC's stance underscores the importance of regulatory oversight in addressing cybersecurity breaches and ensuring accountability to protect consumer data. A recent cyber attack on an Indonesian data center severely disrupted public services, including airport, immigration systems, and exposed significant shortcomings in data backup practices. With 98% of the government's data not backed up, the incident has prompted a national audit to improve cyber resilience and data security. Officials blame poor governance and budget constraints for the lack of backups. The breach highlights the critical need for robust backup strategies and proactive data protection to prevent similar disruptions in the future. Come on, people. Back up the data. Continuing our coverage of a story we are following this week, a large-scale supply chain attack on multiple content delivery networks, including Polyfill.io, BootCDN, BootCSS, and StaticFile, has been traced to a single operator. Researchers discovered exposed Cloudflare keys in a public GitHub repository, which linked the attack to a common entity. The breach affected tens of millions of websites, highlighting severe vulnerabilities in the supply chain. The attack is likely to have been ongoing since June of 2023. Coming up after the break, we've got N2K's Rick Howard talking with guest Caitlin Shim. AWS's Director of AWS Cloud Governance. Rick recently caught up with her at AWS's Reinforce event. They spoke about cloud governance, the growth and development of AWS, and diversity. Stay with us. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated fast. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money. With Vanta, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Our listeners can claim a special offer of $1,000 off Vanta at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber for $1,000 off Vanta. The IT world used to be simpler. 
You only had to secure and manage environments that you controlled. Then came new technologies and new ways to work. Now, employees, apps, and networks are everywhere. This means poor visibility, security gaps, and added risk. That's why Cloudflare created the first-ever connectivity cloud. Visit cloudflare.com to protect your business everywhere you do business. AWS is a media partner here at N2K CyberWire. In June of 2024, Brandon Karp, our VP of Programming, Jen Iben, our executive producer, and I traveled to the great city of Philadelphia to attend the 2024 AWS Reinforced Security Conference. And I got to sit down with Caitlin Chim, the GM of AWS Cloud Governance. Of course, one of the conference themes is trying to understand the impact of machine learning and generative AI in the cloud security space. Caitlin was quick to point out that just because a new technology comes down the road that appears all shiny and new, it doesn't mean that InfoSec leaders need to change their strategies, their first principles. She calls it your strong security governance foundation. I think over the course of my career, I've been honored to see a whole bunch of new technologies come up. Yeah. And so one thing we've learned from that experience is that it's really, really important to have a strong security and governance foundation. And if you have that foundation, um, it helps protect you for whatever may happen. Um, Gen AI is the one that we're very excited about, and you're, you're hearing a lot about this week, but there'll be something else tomorrow. The Gen AI will be old hat and we'll be really excited about something else next. And that's really where you really want to make sure you have that fence and that perimeter around your environment to make sure that it's set up correct. In some ways, like AI and ML for Amazon is old hat. We've been working on, we've been working in this for over 25 years. So I think it's what people forget. You know, machine yeah. learning algorithms have been around for a long time. Yes. Right. Uh, exactly. It just got popular in the last <laughs> couple of years. Yeah. Exactly. And so learning how to be secure and well governed with all of that is, um, we have a lot of experience to bring to the table with that. So I just found out that you were one of the, almost one of the original employees around AWS in 2006, right? When it all started, right? That's when we launched AWS as a product, right? So you were, there at the ground floor? Or? Uh, I was on the team that launched AWS CloudWatch, which was the, if my memory serves me right, something like the fifth AWS service that launched. So I won't call myself one of the originals. I was I won't compete with Peter DeSantis on launching <laughs> EC2 or anything like that. But um, I would I, totally <laughs> claim that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's been fun watching AWS grow up over so the years. Tell me about that. The what is what's the difference between young AWS and, you know, modern AWS these days? In, in some ways a lot of things aren't different, right? Like Security has been critical to Amazon since before AWS. Security is how we keep our customer trust. It's how we keep customers being willing to give us our credit card for Amazon.com. AWS came from a lot of those lessons that we've learned as a company even before AWS existed. I think the big thing has been scale, right? More and more customers have chosen AWS. They've moved our workloads to AWS. And um, they pick us because we offer a wide variety of services and we're the most secure cloud provider. So your experience, uh, and you're passionate about um, diversity in the workplace. You're a successful woman at AWS in a world dominated by, you know, mostly white guys, right? Uh, so you've seen it from the beginning. You know, wh what is your, uh, can you give us a sense of what it's like these days working as a woman in a male-dominated world? I can say that I've, ha I've seen a number of women come up right now in I'm in the cloud governance and identity team, and I have two other female peers at my level, which is amazing. And I think in the world where we see the importance of diversity of thought, AWS and Amazon are very encouraging of making sure that we do think that bring in many different perspectives, women, many different things that we look for, not just gender. And... And then I lost a train of thought on your question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me rephrase it then, right? Uh, we've known about diversity and inclusion issues in the cybersecurity space for a decade, let's say. And we all, all of us tried to do things to make it better, right? And it has gotten a little bit better, but it hasn't been a re resounding success in any way, I don't think, right? Do you agree with that or 
I've seen it get better for it's gotten sure. Better, yeah. yeah. Um, but I there's still work to do for sure. Is there anything you can point to that here's things that works and here's things that don't work? It's a good question. Um making sure that diverse perspectives are brought in uh is been is always super important. Our success of our products, it means that the people working on them need to reflect our customers and every customer needs to be secure, not just people who look like one particular profile. And I think this also, the Amazon, there's a lot of systems at Amazon that I think really do help with that as well. Our whole working backwards process means that we are, start with the customer, what they need, write down the data for what they need and make decisions, not based on a PowerPoint presentation, but based on what we think is truly the best customer experience. Personally, for me, I found that be super helpful to make sure my voice is heard. I can put the data down, we read it, we evaluate it, and we have a discussion about what's right for the customer, not just the loudest person in the room. When I first started thinking about diversity and inclusion issues, there was really two pieces, right? It was an awareness piece where we did a lot of, you guys should know that there's a problem that we need to try to fix. And, and then there was a second piece where we actually tried to do stuff to make it better. I know in the early days, we did a lot of awareness things and didn't do a lot of fix-it kinds of things. Is that still the current situation? I think it's a balance. It's a balance, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, awareness alone, and there have, I've seen some studies recently that awareness alone can sometimes hurt, not help. So you need you need those mechanisms in place. You need to check. You need to think about how are we making sure that we're not just catering our business environment, our meetings, our processes around one type of personality. If someone's quieter, how do we make sure that their voice is recognized? If someone doesn't speak very loudly, how do we make sure that we're seeing their opinion? Things like that. Well, I've always said this is not a woman's problem. It's a men's problem, right? Men have to do what you're describing, right? They have to see that there's this talented person in the corner who's kind of quiet and bring them out. You know, they have to do that, right? Or my, or we're never going to get there. Yeah, it's it's everyone, right? It's uh, And I've been honored to work for a number of leaders who have been very, very explicit about recognizing when there's someone who has good ideas that may not be highlighted and they explicitly call them out. Um, and certainly when I was junior in my career, I had a boss who would he'd either slack me or or explicitly call me out like, Caitlin, what do you think here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we need, right? Yeah. So you uh, at the conference, at the AWS Reinforced Conference, you're on a panel uh, that discuss women's issues. Is there a main theme from that that you're going to uh, tell everybody? I, I think our biggest theme is encouraging women to focus on security. It is one of the industries that, or one of the ends of computer science, we don't see as many women. And security touches every possible industry. There's not much you can do where you don't care about security and tech. And so it's, it's really talking about how having, first of all, encouraging women to focus on security, think about security. And um, what I really want the audience to take away is that it's a really advantage to you to focus on that and learn it because you it's a transferable skill. If you're in healthcare, if you're in cloud providing, if you end up working on devices, everyone needs to care about security. So it's not just a... Um... Uh, a thing you could do is a thing that might sustain you forever anywhere you might go, right? So don't be afraid of it. Is, exactly. Right? That's yes. excellent. Well, I think that's a great place to leave this. Well, thank you for coming in and telling us about this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. That was Caitlin Shim, the GM of AWS Cloud Governance. Enterprises today are using hundreds of SaaS apps. Are you reaping their productivity and innovation benefits, or are you lost in the sprawl? Enter Savvy Security. They help you surface every SaaS app, identity, and risk, so you can shine a light on shadow IT and risky identities. Savvy monitors your entire SaaS attack surface to help you efficiently eliminate toxic risk combinations and prevent attacks. So go on, get savvy about SaaS and harness the productivity benefits. Fuel innovation while closing security gaps. Visit Savvy.Security to learn more.
And finally, we dive into a cyber scandal straight out of a dystopian thriller, but with a distinctly real-world twist. JTBC, a leading Korean news outlet, has blown the whistle on KT Corporation, one of South Korea's largest telecom providers, for deliberately infecting over 600,000 users with malware to deter them from using torrent services. In May of 2020, WebHard, a Korean cloud service reliant on BitTorrent, started drowning in user complaints about bizarre system errors. As it turned out, KT Corporation had decided to moonlight as a digital vigilante. Their malware operation, straight from their data center south of Seoul, wreaked havoc. Users saw strange folders appearing, files vanishing, and in severe cases, entire PCs rendered useless. The police traced the malware back to KT's data center and have charged 13 individuals, including KT employees and subcontractors, with violating South Korea's Protection of Communication Secrets Act and the Information and Communications Network Act. The investigation is ongoing, and more heads might roll as authorities dig deeper. So next time your computer acts up, remember, it might not be a bug. It may just be your friendly neighborhood telecom company trying to teach you a lesson. And that's The Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. Be sure to check out Research Saturday tomorrow, where Dave sits down with Ismail Valenzuela, Vice President of Threat Research and Intelligence from the BlackBerry Threat Research and Intelligence team, to discuss their work on transparent tribe targeting the Indian government, defense, and aerospace sectors, and leveraging cross-platform programming languages. That's Research Saturday. Check it out. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. Your feedback ensures that we deliver the insights that keep you a step ahead in the rapidly changing world of cybersecurity. If you like the show, please share a rating and review in your podcast app. Please also fill out the survey in the show notes or send an email to cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K Cyberwire is part of a daily routine of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, from the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent agencies. N2K makes it easy for companies to optimize your biggest investment, or people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn how at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is me, with original music and sound design by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Brandon Karp. Simone Petrella is our president. Peter Kilpie is our publisher. And I'm Trey Hester, filling in for Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next week. Next week.